Hey everybody, I'm Cheryl Swift, the Duchess of Rock and Roll, and I'm here today in Lafayette, Indiana, not Louisiana, with Levi Lowry. My, Welcome. My stepfather told me um, before I left to come out here, I, he just didn't hear me. He said, um, oh, I bet they got a lot of good Cajun food out there. It's like, yeah, I'll, I'll check when we get a... <laughs> this I haven't morning. found any yet. Yeah, I haven't found any yet. We did find a great diner here in Lafayette. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I said to one of my friends this morning, one of our mutual friends actually, I said, I'm going to Lafayette, Louisiana. She said, oh, please don't go to Lafayette, Louisiana. <laughs> you should probably go to Indiana today. And I was like, valid point. So just full disclosure here, everyone. Levi is a friend of mine. And uh, we actually, my husband and I partnered with him in a record deal in the last year. And it's been quite exciting. So um, I just wanted everyone to know that. I feel like if you're going to interview yeah. someone, there should be full disclosure. For sure. So... Levi is uh, an interesting and prolific songwriter, in my opinion. Let's talk about your hit. Let's talk about Colder Weather. What would you like to know? I would like to know what it's like to have a song that goes to number one that you wrote. What, does, what is okay. that like? That, it's actually pretty funny. I was down in uh, Thomaston, Georgia, at the Smoke on the Water uh, barbecue and music festival. Okay, nice. And um, that's when I got the call. Wyatt called me and told me that it was that it had gone number one. And um, it was April the first, so I didn't believe him. I, I, thought, I wouldn't have either. I thought that he was joking with me, right. playing a trick on me. Um, he called. It took him four or five more times to call me to convince me that it was actually real and that it had gone number one. Because that was my dream forever. I wanted a number one song on country radio. And um, it's, it's amazing to have that come true, and it's followed up very quickly with, well, what am I supposed to do now? Yes. You know? Yes, because sometimes when you reach your dream, don't you find it interesting, the what's next part? Well, yeah, because that's, that's, where, that's where all the joy comes from, is the struggle and the pain and the sorrow and you know, the wanting. And then once you get it, it's, that all goes away. You have, your, your purpose is, has been fulfilled. The purpose that you've set forth for yourself has been fulfilled. And then, you, you, I mean, it gets, it gets pretty empty afterwards, really. Um, it takes a lot of reprioritizing and re, um, just analyzing what you're here for, you know. Maybe it's not necessarily to have a number one song on country radio. <laughs> you know what right. I, mean? yeah. I can totally understand that. I uh, The reason I started the blog was because... I had thought about it for years, and then in April, one of my friends from high school, who was only 46, dropped dead of a blood clot, and I sat with his widow and told her I won't waste any more days of my life, I'm going to live my dream, and what's true to me is music, yeah. music, my family, God, those are the things, not in that order necessarily, are what's important to me, right. and I decided to start this blog, and I'm blessed to have friends like you in the music world who That's are, right. you know... It's just so exciting to have a friend who has a number, who had a number one song, yeah. and to see what's coming next. So, no, I, I, I do want to say it was very exciting. Like it was absolutely wonderful. It was, um, it was, it was literally a dream come true. So it was, it was amazing. It had its moments. I think that it's important to learn lessons. I mean, even from the good times as well. You know? Yes. So, so I do want to say that it wasn't all negative. Oh, I totally, yeah. I totally get it. Because once you reach the pinnacle, it's like when pro football players right. leave. Right. What do you do tomorrow, <laughs> right? Yeah, when my grandfather retired, he, he lost all sense of like, you know, purpose. Yeah, so now he's out in the yard, every year in the garden every day. He's working probably harder than he's ever worked in his life. Right, I can tell. After, after retirement. Right, he's like, wait a minute, tomorrow comes, right? Mm -hmm. So, speaking of tomorrow, I know you did an album last year with this new up and coming company called Loud. Can you talk a little bit about that process and how that's been going for you? It's been wonderful. We had a uh, partner such as yourself and your husband, and um, we ended up with uh, over 200 partners, which um, their initial investment allowed us to stay on the road all year this year. Um, we've toured the entire country for the most part. There's a few markets we didn't hit, so I'm sorry. Um, we I'll still try, like I'll you. try to get there next year. <laughs> um, but it was absolutely amazing. It was very rewarding. It was also the first time that anybody had enabled fans to actually make money, so the records. Yes, it's very exciting. Yeah. 
I uh, I got very excited. I had gone on the Today Show and talked about you and, and oh, nice. my little, you know, I had a little, my perfect. little sign out on the plaza. I was very excited. It. I've worn out my bumper sticker. My okay. where is Levi Lowry? We've got to press some more. Of yeah, we need some more of those. So on the on the horizon, mm -hmm. um, I hear you might be going back into the studio with some new music. Yeah, very soon. Very soon. Um, and it's not all written yet, I'd be a liar if I said that. But, um, I can't really say, because my wife will kill me. You know, Stephanie, she, I think she'd have a hard time with she'd, she'd be pretty upset if I said, if I revealed the, the secrets. But, there will but, be no secrets for you. But um, I will say that it, is the, it will be the most music I've ever put out in one time. That's great. Yeah, which is exciting. <laughs> yes. And I will be partnering with Loud again to release it. And, um, the gold record deal. Uh, uh, the gold record deal format that we did last time is, is, gonna, is going away. Um, basically, what will happen is you'll buy the record for ten bucks, and then you have the option to share it if you like. And um, if somebody buys it uh, off of you sharing it, then you profit from that deal. So, uh, and you can share it for free too. You don't even have to buy the record. It's, it's all it's open to everybody. So, it's all about word of mouth and spreading the word. And, and my fans will still be in my distribution. You know, right. for, the, for this next record too. Well, having worked in direct sales and network marketing my whole life, I'm yeah. all about word of mouth. You know, yeah, it's always exactly. been the way I've driven my businesses exactly. in life. And you and know, that's in how the we found. World. We, we talked about it for a long time with the guys at Loud, and that's the one common denominator is, is everybody has those bands that your friend turns you on to, and you, everybody has those bands that you preach about. To, yes. to everybody that's willing to I shudder to think the money I would yeah. have if I got paid for the music preaching. I exactly. Exactly. So why not? You know, why not enable? Why not put the money where it, where it belongs instead of in the pockets of the regulators? Right. Labels, right. I agree. Let's go back to the beginning for a minute. I know that um, last year I was privileged um, to have you in St. Louis. One of my friends did a show with you, and I was privileged to get to help with that. And one of the things we talked about that night were some of your early influences. Mm -hmm. um, I will let you answer what they were, but I was really intrigued with the conversation we had about your the church influence, mm -hmm. and I personally love the church influence in your music. I always say to my friends, we're about to go to church now, yes. y'all. <laughs> There's a couple songs where I get really happy. Can you talk a minute about what that's I been as an influence in, in your music today? I can tell you first that you'll, you'll really enjoy the new of songs, because it's, yes. there's been a lot of going back to church. But, um, I, I, I grew up in a Southern Baptist church. I mean, and, and all of it's laid out there in the songs. If you if you want to know my bio, just buy a couple of records. Um, but I grew up in a Southern Baptist church, Ebenezer Baptist Church in Harkins, Georgia, which is a small town within the city limits of Tequila. Georgia. Okay. So um, and that was my life. I mean, that's that's where I learned how to sing. That's where I uh, I would take turns on it. You know, it was all it was all out of the hand. And, um, Back before the hymnal died. Right, right. I'm having a hard time. I'm trying to tell you the story without quoting my own lyrics. lyrics. <laughs> it's almost impossible. Is it okay if I'm hokey and quote uh, oh, your own no, lyrics? That's fine. <laughs> it's one of my favorite songs. But, um, I would, you know, we'd be singing out of the hymnal, and, and uh, every time I would pick out every verse, I would pick a different part to sing from uh, you know, the bass to the, even you know, the baritone and the tenor. And just pick out a different part from, the, from all the voices that I heard around. Uh, I, just, I don't know. I just fell in love with that style of singing. Some, I've actually been listening to a lot of uh, Sacred Heart singing lately. Again, and it's just so powerful. I don't know what it is. You should, you know, it, you know, it's like it just can't be defined. It's, it's really anyway. So I grew. I just grew up in church, and it, it shaped a lot of the. Uh, what would later become material for my music. It's, it's always played a part of my life. Um, and it shows. Yeah. And I appreciate it. <laughs> I don't know. It's it's hard to talk about because it's, it's everything. Yeah. Um, it's absolutely everything. Yeah, some gentleman at a party the other night asked me to find what music meant to me. And I was like, music brings me closer to God. There's really no other answer for me. It puts me in the presence of God because it's one of the only times in life I'm completely present to the moment. Yeah. And I believe that's what the hymnals and the singing were for, was to make us believe in the we were in the presence of God, because we were being sure. in the church. Worship. Worship, yeah, yeah. which, yeah. yes. So, I don't mean to go off on a 
tangent there, but I think it's important because when I listen to your music, one of the things I appreciate the most is your authenticity and you're willing to share your life in your well, it's, lyrics. It's honesty. It's honesty. And I, I think, I, I don't know why or how I picked it up, but um, I knew from a very early age that honesty was very important when it comes to music because I know that the audience can tell the difference between a line and the truth. And when I was younger, I was just a fiddle player. And, and I was writing a bunch of fiddle tunes and um, orchestral numbers. And, um, I wrote down on a piece of paper, and I found it not too long ago in an old journal. And it said, uh, if I can make people feel what I felt when I wrote that song, then I've done my job. And I was referring to instrumental pieces. You know what I mean? Wow. And so that, I think that... that um, Terrible at talking, but better at writing. That stuck with me um, when, I, when I started writing lyrics and stories and poems. Well, and it shows. And, and th those of us who've watched your career and who are a part of it and who listen to your music consistently, you pick up the honest theme, the authentic theme, the, the, the love for your family and your wife and your boys. True. The two blondes. It's funny, when yeah. I met Levi... I didn't know him, but I was playing with these two cute kids yeah. in the parking lot, and this lady started talking to me. I had no idea it was Rosie and Boston and stuff. And somebody goes, do you know who that is? And I was like, a cute lady with their two cute kids. And then somebody goes, dude, that's Levi Lowry's wife. And I was like, okay, well, I think she's Stephanie, too. Like, I had no idea. So it was kind of fun how I met you. You know, I didn't really yeah. know when I met you the first time. It was funny. Yeah, um, the kids and Stephanie both are, are very, uh, they're not very hesitant to hang on top of anyway. Right, they're not shy, they're and not, I think that's why we got along. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can see that. <laughs> so, that was a great, it was a great first meeting, not knowing what I was walking into yeah. that day. Um, and now we're here two years and two months later, mm -hmm. and yeah. I get to count you as my friend and be sure. a part of your music and get to interview you today. And, I just think that it's so nice to have someone succeed and then to just see what's, you know, what's next. Like you said, it's you climbed the mountain, you reached that pinnacle of the first dream, yeah. and now there is to, what, you know, what is coming next. So it's right. exciting to watch. I th and I think what is coming next will be clear on the next one. Really. I just, you know, it, there comes a time where you have to examine what you're doing. And if you're just putting out music for the sake of putting out music, then that's okay. That can be fun, but um, there's a reason that I'm. There's a reason that I do what I do. There's a reason that I've been given the ability to do what I do, and it's time that I start using it for that purpose. Amen. Yeah. Well, I'm excited. Me too. Awesome. Me too. All right. Well, thank you so much for taking your time out of your day. We're here in Lafayette, Indiana, where Levi Lowry and Danny McAdams are going to open tonight for Blackberry Smoke. I, right there. We are at the closest place where we can hear each other. Possibly. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> so, anything else you want to say before we uh, close out the interview? What's your, what's your yeah, my blog. Your you know, is. I should probably say what my website you really is. Should. You should, you should advertise it. I said it at the beginning, I yeah, thought, but who knows. Yeah, so you can see this interview and more at theduchessofrockandroll.com. Stay and tuned. Sign up for stay tuned. You can follow me on Twitter at duchessofrnr.com. There you go. And you can follow Levi at... At Levi Lowry. At Levi Lowry. Or levilowry.com. Just watch the spelling. She'll have the correct spelling. Yes, yeah, so the, the spelling. I will have a little blurb in yeah. his spelling because... I even have tickets that will be worth yep. a lot of money someday <laughs> with the misspelling tickets of Levi's last name. It was, like the, no show yes. <laughs> it was a pleasure. It was a pleasure to see you oh, today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And shout out to Hunter for a great job. Yes.